Hey buddy, how are you doing? How are you doing? And how are you doing if you've clicked on this video? How are you? Are you enjoying a spring? Are you enjoying autumn? Did you have a good Easter? Let me know in the comments how you are doing. Cousin, it is fine. I have to go in now quite a lot to pick out spent blooms. I've been quite busy. As much as I don't mind ants, there's been a little bit too much activity with the ants lately. So I've been taking the colony down a little bit with a bit of garlic spray just to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. The season is going to be long. We're only just now getting started. They have plenty of time to reproduce and multiply. So I just gave him a little bit of a cleanup the other day. And he's doing fine. Look, no attack from King at all. This is good stuff. I'm very, very pleased. Anyway, my goodness, blooms for you. Let's go and have a look-see what has been blooming. And then we're just going to end up in the blooming alley because it's looking absolutely spectacular. How about this cutie beauty? My first time bloomer, Catlia intermedia, variety of Quinny, Cerula, Trishes, Orchids and Plant Life. I have a first time bloomer here for you. And I have to say that she looks better in real life than she does on camera. But I hope that her beauty can still be appreciated on camera, regardless of what I'm seeing. But Trisha's orchids and plant life. This first time bloomer is blooming for you as a massive thank you for joining my membership. You are officially an orchid ninja and that makes you an authority. <laughs> really, really appreciate your faith in me. Very, very early days. You don't even know all the details of my membership plan, but the fact that I saw a berry odor right up against your name, I was like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, wait, she became a member. I was so happy. <laughs> Thank you so very much. That was a little Easter egg nugget right there. Yes, I really appreciate it, Trish. Thank you so very, very much. So when my intermedia here opened, I thought I have got to, I, I have got to do as part of my perks, the shout outs to my members and there we go it'll be more than just that but you will hear from me in an email when i finalized all the points and the factors and then we can take it from there but i have to say that i really really appreciate trish thank you so very very much this is lump in the throat time <laughs> thank you trish trish's orchids and plant life to be exact. Right, I have put her up on a pedestal where she belongs. Very, very happy to see this one in bloom, but I did want to, apart from saying thank you to you, Trish, I wanted to also show the bloom a little bit more close up. I've just got some breeze issues. I tried to move her to a different location and then there was light problems, but never mind. I think we're getting there now with the color. So these intermediates do come in a variety of different colors, especially the variety of Quinea Cerula. She has not got a fragrance just yet, but after four or five days of being open, her petals are starting to go from white to a little bit of a lavender blush, just slightly. But not bad, not bad for a first time bloomer. The blooms are beautiful. I like how they open so flat. Look at that. Boom. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, very, very special bloom to dedicate or blooms to dedicate for a very, very special member. Trisha's Orchid and Plant Life. Welcome Orchid Ninja.
In between the breezes, we're going to capture the beauty of this gorgeous, gorgeous Epicatlia Kyoguchi Happy Field. I dedicate and say thank you to Nina, not myself, <laughs> Nina V. This little bloom cluster blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support here on my channel. I thought it would be fitting because I'm extremely possessive over this orchid <laughs> that I dedicate it to someone who has my name. This way it somewhat stays within my realm. No, just kidding. But yeah, Nina V. This is one of the cutest little orchids that is a reliable bloomer. And she has the most amazing, amazing fragrance. Honestly, I am not a fan of very floral feminine fragrances. But when it comes to this one, it is so mind-blowingly beautiful. And if you have been on my channel long enough, you know that I always will reference the perfume Issei Miyaki. There is no other way to exactly describe the fragrance of this orchid. It matches 100%. Some fragrances I say, I wish they would bottle it because they are so gorgeous. This fragrance is already bottled and it's a classic. It is not overpowering, it is not overbearing, it is intense. You would know this fragrance is in the room and whoever is wearing it is not a kind of standout person, just like this orchid. It's not standout, she's not enormous, but these blooms have a charm to them, not just because of the fragrance, but the fact that they are just so cute. They have such interesting characteristics in the lip. And then these little clusters, I can smell them when I'm sat at the computer and she's outside in my blooming alley and there's a waft of wind. I can smell her from that distance. So incredibly intense in her beautiful fragrance. She has now been open over a week, maybe 10 days. The blooms do not look at all tired. And she is a cross between the Aurantiaca and the Aromaticum. Now, I am obviously very tempted to find both parents. I need to see which orchid of the parents has this fragrance because honestly, I don't mind getting it double or triple. So these two orchids, the Arantiaca and the Aromaticum are on my wish list, which is not getting any smaller. <laughs> but Nina V, back to the subject at hand. My Epicatlia Kyoguchi, happy field. She blooms for you. And she fragrances for you, if that is even a word. Thank you very, very, very much for your support here on my channel. This is my little Arengus fastuosa, potted up last year in 2020, off the mount into just ceramis and orchid top. And then deep breath and fingers crossed, living on a prayer that it will be okay. Well, I have two spikes this year and they are okay. But here we go. Look at those blemishes there. However, I am not going to pass these blooms by. And I hope that Orki Maniaco will forgive me that his blooms are not super pristine. I was trying to get them filmed in time and then the weather changed. And I wonder if that is the reason why I'm getting these blemishes because they haven't, they haven't been open that long. Part of the reason of taking her off the mount was to avoid water dripping on these blooms because they are extremely sensitive. Although they feel very robust to the touch, water and such things, not so much. So Orki Maniaco, that's something we can all relate to, translated into Orchid Maniac. Yes, I confess I am one of those, but I would like to say thank you or muchas gracias por su apoyo en mi canal. Agradezco mucho cuando estás en mis comentarios y me encanta tu canal también. Así que 
Yo no tengo mucha gente que también hacen vídeos de orquídeas aquí en YouTube que también viven en España, pero te he encontrado y agradezco que estás apoyando mi canal tal como estás haciendo. Muchas gracias, Orqui Maniaco, por tu apoyo. Orqui Maniaco is in Madrid and I am very, very happy to have found a channel that also does videos regarding orchids living in Spain. And I just hope that you will forgive me for not giving you perfect, pristine blooms. So let me circle back about why I took her off the mount. She was getting too big for my hot, dry climate, and I was not sure I was able to keep up. So that's why she's now in a pot with Ceramis. I'm hoping that the amount of humidity she gets in this setup, along with the tray, will help her grow into a bigger and stronger Orangus fastuosa. The other reason was definitely not water on the blooms. This way I can avoid getting water on the blooms. When she opened her buds, they were super clean. I didn't film them at the time because I was hoping they would open up a little bit more flat. But okay, given the circumstances that she is in, those blooms won't be able to come out flat and give a nice show because they're all a little bit scrunched up against the leaves. I'm hoping that will correct itself as the orchid gets bigger. As you can see that the spurs in there, they've got nowhere to go. And here, I peeled them out to give them some room. But yeah, I think the high humidity that I had these past couple of days have caused these blemishes to happen. However, Orqui Maniaco, Espero que te gusta los flores de mi arangues pastuosa. Thank you ever so much for your support on my channel. So I walk away and carry her back to her place and give her a sniff and I'm like, I haven't even mentioned her fragrance. My apologies, so quick add-on. Her fragrance is the typical arangues fragrance of, you know, the jasmine, the sweet jasmine. But this year, because I have a lot more blooms and she's more mature, I have mint notes in the background. So as I walk towards her, I can smell her fragrance at night. As I walk towards her, give her a sniff. And then as I sniff and take her fragrance in, boom, there's like a spearmint fragrance coming along with the jasmine, which is pretty interesting, I must say. I'm not sure I would burn a candle with that combination, but for a bloom, I mean, why not? So it's, it's very, very intense at night. It's a pleasure working at night at my desk and having her in the background with her fragrance. But again, from a distance, it's that jasmine. And then as you get closer and stick your nose in, it'll hit you with some mint. So I just wanted to add that on because I forgot. What's that bobbin in your face? Look at that. That is my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana, who has finally, finally opened up all her blooms. My goodness, that took forever. I remember the care collab. I remember my itty bitty little blooms coming to the forefront. They have now since then tripled in size, but I would prefer to have them a little bit bigger next year. And we're working on that. But in the meantime, there's plenty of blooms here for Palmel. And I hope I get this name right. Jean-Pierre Vierge-Vert. I hope. Jean-Pierre Vierge-Vert. Sounds very French or Canadian to me. So Jean-Pierre, I hope I didn't mess up your name. And Palmel, you share the spike of my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana as a thank you for being so supportive on my channel early days and all that good stuff, which a young channel very, very much appreciates. I do appreciate it a lot. So I am outside risking the breeze, not because the orchid has a problem with a good airflow, but because it could make people a bit dizzy if she just keeps bopping around like that. But isn't that pretty? Very long lasting especially the ones that have opened sooner, earlier. They're still looking nice and fresh. And the one that's just opened a couple of days ago. 
She honestly looks much, much prettier outdoors than indoors. Proof that orchids need to be outdoors, in my opinion, if at all possible. Look at that. And her fragrance is super intense now as well. She's got that beautiful rose fragrance and it is pretty, pretty heavy. So in my dining room, I have Shilleriana during the day, wafts of Kiyoguchi Happy Field throughout the day and night. And then at night, here comes Fastuosa. I'm spoiled, spoiled beyond belief and so happy about this. We're gonna be working on a little experiment this year regarding her culture. She is going to go into the 5.5 pH range when I fertilize and fill the reservoir of the pot and see if I can counteract any leaf drop by giving her the right nutrients ratio as she prefers it more acidic than other orchids. And let's see if I can avoid the classic leaf drop of the Shiliriana, whenever they get into active growth with the roots, boom, a leaf has to say goodbye. So that's what we're going to be working on this year, 2021, with Phalaenopsis Shiliriana. And if it doesn't work, then it's just the attribute of the orchid, and three leaves are the max I can get out of her, which is fine. Bigger blooms would be nice. However, there's plenty of them, plenty of them. For Palmel et Jean Pierre, Pierre Javert. I hope, Pierre Javert. If you see this video, Jean Pierre, please correct me if I am wrong. And Palmel, thank you as well for your support on my channel. You're so very, very much appreciated. So my Phalaenopsis spike is for the two of you. And if the wind would just give us a little bit of a break. I mean, it is cute the way they go bopping around. It's like, no, 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 shake my head, no. I don't want to go inside. Thank you to both of you, Palmel, Jean-Pierre, Pierre Javert. My Phalaenopsis Chiliriana, she blooms for you. My beautiful silver bush as well. Gets a little bit of a click and pluck. Just removing the spent blooms. This year, I'm going to try to see if I can grow it from seed. But for all the viewers here, I know this is not an orchid, but I've been dedicating a lot of blooms lately. I don't have a mass bloomer to dedicate to all of you. So as a thank you from me to you and everybody that watches this video for your support on my channel, might I just dedicate my silver bush to you? exceptions to the rule it is so beautiful It'd be such a shame to you know just keep it for myself all right blooming alley yeah let's wrap a blooms for you video up with a little look at the blooming alley oh my goodness and why not this is just awesome look who's coming onto his own over here Oh, Maxima, here you are. God, I love you. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Really, really appreciate having you here. Even the little keikis. It is just a beautiful, beautiful sight. Your time is very much appreciated. Beauty and the Beast, when the little ones meet the big ones. Gorgeous. Your support is also very, very much appreciated. Thank you so very, very much for everything. I hope that you have yourself a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.